Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the second lecture on phonetics and phonology, a broad overview, an NPTEL MOOC course. So in this unit, we will cover the sounds of the world's languages. While doing so, we attempt to discuss the phonetic diversity in the world's languages. And in lecture one, we talked about how there are diverse languages in the world and where many languages are threatened because of various economic reasons and because of the pressure on, on land and uh, people. Uh, more and more people are speaking the larger languages. So as a result, about half of the world's people speak one of the 10 largest languages. So uh, the fear is that as we fear loss of biodiversity in the world, the loss of languages will lead to a similar crisis in understanding the cognitive structure of the human brain and the human languages are an integral part of our cognitive uh, structure and such loss will be a great loss to humanity. And uh, to study the phonetic diversity, we talked about place of articulation and different locations of articulation. The five major parts of the vocal tract, the movable parts and the 17 articulatory gestures that was um, shown in places of articulation and the nine regions that are the target areas as shown in the diagram in figure 2. So we talked about place of articulation as targets and we talked about how the, the coronal region can be divided into the tip of the tongue, the blade of the tongue targeting different regions and how we can have sounds that we see in very few languages like lingual labials that we saw in Vau and lingual labials in Tonga and we also saw um, other differences in articulation like uh, retroflexion which are seen in some language groups especially in South Asia and also retroflexion is seen in Austronesian languages as well as um, a few other languages. And we also saw that labials, dentals, coronals, the entire coronal region uh, from the dental to the retroflex uh, region have uh, specific ways in which the tongue is used. So it could be either lapic, apical, laminal or dorsal. And then we looked at the gestures for that results in the movement of the tongue or the movable articulators moving towards a particular target area. And we looked at, we stopped at, uh, at the palatal region in the last class and we saw how in languages can have dentialveolar as in uh, ngo which can have laminal dentialveolar, palatalveolar, palatal and velar four regions that um, the stops can contrast. Now uh, let us move on to other places of articulation. So um, after palatal, so we can have languages can also have uvular and pharyngeal fricative. So Hebrew can contrast in terms of la. uvular and Nahar, la. Let us play a few Chimia. Hebrew sounds to hear how different the sound. Chimia, hem, hor, hor, hem, 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 mahar. So initial, mahar, uvular, pharyngeal and glottal. Mahar, mahar, uvular, mahar, mahar, 
Faringeal. Nahar. Nahar. Glottal. Lach. Final. Lach. Uvular. Lach. Lach. Pharyngeal. Lach. Lach. And glottal. Him. So which means even in the uh, dorsal region, we can have um, a three-way distinction as we saw that even with regard to coronals, um, languages can have uh, dental and alveolar uh, and palatal alveolar uh, in a language and um, even in the dorsal region there can be a few contrasts as we see that there could be uvular, pharyngeal and glottal contrasts in a language such as Hebrew. So in Quechua is another language um, which has pharyngeal sounds so Chaka 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 Kuyui 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 Kayu 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 We will come to the symbol which is used here that is the apostrophe that is used to show these sounds. Epig epiglottis. So the epiglottis moves to the back wall of the pharynx. That's how epiglottal sounds are produced. They are very rarely seen in fricatives and the phonemic contrast between pharyngeal and epiglottal place is known to be extremely rare. And let us uh, listen to a few epiglottals in Idoma, a language spoken in, in Nigeria. Papa. 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 These are the epiglottals in Agul. Agul is spoken in Dagestan near the Caspian Sea in Russia. No. This is a voice pharyngeal fricative. Voiceless pharyngeal fricative. Voiceless epiglottal fricative. And a voiceless epiglottal stop. So now let us uh, look at a few other types of other places of articulation. We have not heard velar stops, uh, but velars are possible in as stops as nasals as fricatives and as approximants and other sounds which we have talked about before is that of uh, lingual labials which are formed by touching the blade of the tongue to the upper lip and here are some lingual labial examples from when in taught. Finally, going back to the coronal contrast, we want to see how many stop contrasts can a uh, language have possibly have. So uh, the largest number of stop contrasts that is seen um, in a language called uh, Yan Vuya and we have Yan Vuya data from the Ladifugat and Madison um, repository and we can see the seven place stop place contrast in Yan Vuya and Yan Vuya has bilabial, laminal dental, apical alveolar, apical retroflex. So all these coronal sounds and then a uh, palatal alveolar and then a velar and a front velar as well as a back velar. So finally, that was the front velar and this is the back velar. So uh, now we can see that apart from glottals, pharyngeals, uvulars, velars can also, uh, there can be contrast in language like yan vuya, we can have a contrast between a front velar and a back velar. So these are, and again a language can have um, four different ways in which coronals can contrast, that is a dental T, a T, alveolar, a T and a T and a retroflex ter and a palatal velar cha. 
So, if a language, um, so these are the uh, common contrasts that we see in languages. So, the languages can have dental alveolar, so it is not very common to have both a dental and an alveolar contrast, but that is also seen as we saw uh, examples. But most commonly either the dental or alveolar place of articulation and it is common to have a dental alveolar and velar and if there is a third contrast then it is most common to have a palatal or uvular contrast. And if there are fourth or fifth uh, contrast then we can have language can have a retroflex as a fourth way and sometimes labia or velar. So, these this is the five way contrast that stops uh, that we can see it stops contrasting in languages. However, we also saw Yan Viva which had seven way stop contrast. So, that was the um, place of articulation and we saw that we can have coronals, we can have dorsals, we can have radicals and we will summarize all the places of articulation towards the end of this lecture. Manner of articulation, we have seen manner of articulation in the previous lecture on phonetics, articulatory phonetic stops require complete closure, nasals also require complete closure if they are stops, nasal stops, but then the velum is lowered and air is released through the nose and then we have rapid um, sort of vibrating beating motion for this for the production of trills and then we have tap or flap and then we have fricative which where we have the occlusion is not that like that of the stop where it is not complete closure but it is partial and slow release. And we also saw that there could be a difference between centrality and laterality in languages. So, we can also have lateral fricatives where the air is released from both sides of the articulator. Then we can have approximants where we do not have complete occlusion and we have a very, um, the occlusion is um, not as narrow as that of stops or fricatives and then we have lateral ones and we have central and lateral approximants. So, there are uh, two lateral fricatives and there are four lateral approximants in the languages of the world. Now, what are the main things that we have that we need to consider when we are studying sounds? We saw place of articulation which is number 4 here to a, a large extent, we saw manner of articulation. There are a couple of more things which give the um, sounds their particular their shape and their color. So, uh, the, the things that which are important apart from place of articulation, manner of articulation is the air stream mechanism, the glottal st state, the part of the tongue laminal or apical or subapical etcetera and um, centrality and nasality are also all uh, these seven aspects give the consonant sounds their particular um, shape and flavor and color actually. And so, even though we have studied in our uh, basic course on phonetics that the three things place of articulation, manner of articulation, glottis which are most important, but now we see that there are additional factors which have to be um, taken into account while studying consonants uh, apart from the three major factors and all these all these seven aspects play their role in the production of consonants. Let us see uh, something that we have not seen so far. For instance, let us see <laughs> uh, voiceless nasals. As we know nasals involve the release of air through the nasal cavity because the lowering of the velum and there is already a, another closure in the vocal tract. So, nasalization and fricatives are not compatible and the existence of nasal fricatives is very often disputed. However, it is possible to have nasals which are voiceless. Nah. Nah. 
These are voiceless nasals from Burmese. Burmese can have contrastive nasals which are along the places of articulation of bilabial, dental, palatal and velar. And in all these places of articulation, they can contrast based on their on the state of the glottis that is voiceless versus voiced. So, Burmese has voiceless and voiced nasals in all the places of articulation possible for the nasals that is bilabial, dental, palatal and velar. That is a bi bilabial voiceless nasal. Bilabial dental nasal. Bilabial palatal nasal. That is a bilabial velar nasal. And all these nasals yeah. you heard were nah. all these nasals that you heard were voiceless nasals. So uh, when you heard the voiceless nasals, you heard a whispering uh, sound along with the production of nasal, and that is a characteristic of a voiceless sonorants. So another manner of articulation that we have not discussed at all so far is that of uh, trills. So trills um, involve two articulators which open and close against each other rapidly and vigorously. So Kele is a language um, which is spoken in the island of Manus which is north of New Guinea. Kele has both bilabial and alveolar trills. Let me play the bilabial and alveolar Pulim, ruin, decay. Okay, so those were the bilabial. Brankay. That's bilabial. Ruin. This is alveolar. So now we have seen voiceless nasals and trills, which are bilabial or alveolar and something which we had not seen so far and other aspects which we will cover is that of the airstream mechanism that is pulmonic, glottalic or velaric that languages can um, contrast and importantly another aspect that we have to consider in this lecture is that of airstream direction which also gives a particular shape and color and uh, flavor of um, sounds and which um, may not be available in the languages which are most commonly seen or spoken in um, the languages of the world. So um, the airstream mechanism, the airstream mechanism, pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism is the one which is most commonly employed for the production of sounds. However, there are sounds which do not use the pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism and they can be glottalic, they can be velaric as well. And for the production of the pulmonic airstream mechanism aggressive, the air is pushed out of the lungs and then the uh, vocal tract gives the shape to the sounds which are produced. So all normal sounds are produced by the pulmonic airstream mechanism and also then there are others like the glottalic where the airstream is aggressive and can produce sounds like ejectives and we have mostly voiceless aggressive uh, sounds and then we have, uh, please note that this is the symbol that was used for the Quechua ejectives with the apostrophe which we said that we will discuss later in the last lecture. And we already heard a few adjectives in Quechua in the last, in the previous lecture. And the other air direction that is possible from the glottalic um, airstream mechanism is that of ingressive and the stop consonants can be implosives and they are mostly voiced. So um, the glottalic airstream produces sounds both in the aggressive and that is the 
air flowing out and ingressive that is the air sucked in and in the both directions sounds are produced. In the velaric um, airstream mechanism sounds are produced with the air which is sucked inside the velaric region and what is produced with that sound with that air by the velaric airstream is uh, called clicks. So, uh, these are the three airstream mechanisms and of which pulmonic is the most commonly used and then there is glottalic and velaric. So, talking now about contrast and uh, parameters, making speech sounds involves um, the airstream mechanism moving air by exhaling from lungs and the pulmonic aggressive airstream, the glottalic aggressive airstream and uh, ejective sounds, closures in the vocal tract and the vocal folds and compressed air released with high pressure from oral closure. So, this is how contrast happens as a result of the use of these airstream mechanisms. Let us look at another group of sounds which are found in some languages. So, here we have Syrian Arabic. So, in Arabic it is uh, in uh, some varieties of Arabic, um, we find differences in the way obstruents are produced and these are called emphatics. So, what are emphatics? Emphatics are earlier obstruents which are now, which now either have a palatalized, glottalized or uh, laryngealized uh, sounds. So, they have a secondary articulation and that makes them emphatic. So, there is difference between plain and emphatic consonants in Syrian Arabic. So, let us look at a few. That is a plain obstruent, a plain stop sound, plosive sound and this is an emphatic which is glottalized. Tar. So, this is a voiceless alveolar plosive in Syrian Arabic which can contrast based on whether it is an emphatic or a non-emphatic. So, it is a plosive either it is this one tar. or this one with a glottalized quality to it. So, another one here is the the, the voiced alveolar plosive which can be either a, a plain one or it can be an emphatic one. Dard. 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 Again, these uh, fricatives which can be either plain or emphatic. Safe. 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 Zil. Zil. And then there are the Syrian Arabic uvulars. So, the Arabic uh, uvulars can be either uh, plosives or they can be fricatives like the ones that we see on the screen. They can be uh, along the place at the, the place of articulation being pharyngeal or glottal. And for the plosive, for the fricatives, we also have a uvular place of articulation and here we have one example of a fricative which is uvular. Khali. So, that is a voiceless uvular fricative. That is a voiced uvular fricative. So, both examples are from Syrian Arabic. Then there are the pharyngeal fricatives in this variety of Arabic. So, again uh, we can have um, the fricative which is uh, non-emphatic like a plain one and an emphatic one. Hali. Hali. Kasi. So, we can also have a voiceless pharyngeal plosive, Amal. a glottal, a voiceless glottal plosive etcetera. So, a dialect of Hebrew also has uvular and pharyngeal Chimia. and uh, some of these will be played and the distinction here is again uvular Hor and glottal. Hem. Hor Hem. Hor Hem. Hem. Nahar. 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 
mahar la 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 so here we can see the mahar the uvular sound the pharyngeal sound, mahar sounds can be contrastive um, mahar earlier we saw that the uvular fricatives in arabic the uvular pharyngeal and glottal sounds are contrast among the fricatives so in the plosives we have pharyngeal and glottal and apart from that we also have emphatic sounds which are uh, obstruents but which have a glottalized or um, glottalized can be glottalized pharyngealized or laryngeal or uh, laryngealized depending on uh, various other factors mostly historical so uh, now we see that in hebrew the there can be uh, there is Chimia. Chimia. Uh, the arabic variety that, that contrasts with a pharyngeal fricative and Nahar. so uh, glottal uh, fricative and glottal stop quechua also has um, uvular sounds and we will play these quechua sounds and quechua will be important to talk about uh, another uh, type of sounds called epiglottals so here aka kuyi 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 gayu epiglottal so these sounds which are produced towards the back of the mouth where the um, the epiglottis is makes a constriction to the back wall of the pharynx these are called epiglottals and they are rarely found in fricatives and what is often found is phonemic contrast between pharyngeal uh, so what is um, often not found is a uh, pharyngeal and an epiglottal uh, contrast so these examples are from epiglottals in agul agul is spoken in dagestan uh, near the Caspian Sea in Russia. The first one was a voice pharyngeal fricative. The second is a voiceless pharyngeal fricative. <coughs> and the voiceless epiglottal fricative. And a voiceless epiglottal stop. So, another type of sound are what we have is labial velars. And you will hear that in a language called Idoma, spoken in Nigeria. Here, the second sound is the labial velar, and you can see that in uh, Idoma, in among labials, we have labial, we have labial velar, and we also have labialized apart from a velar sound. Abba. Abba. And Abba. this is the labial velar sound. We can see the symbol here that is used for the labial velar that we use this diacritic to show that it is one sound which is both labial and a velar as you can see in the text here that one velar sound, one labial sound, one velar, one labial, one velar, one labial is put together by a diacritic on top. So, um, then among the back sounds, we also have velars. So, velars can be stops, nasals, fricatives and approximants. So, um, velar stops and velar nasals are quite common across languages. Also, the velar fricatives and the velar um, approximants may not be very common, but these are definitely uh, the stop contrasts are found in plenty of languages of the world. So, uh, lingual labial is, was a sound that we talked about in the beginning of this lecture. So, going now to the front part of our articulation system, let us review the, a few of the sounds there. Lingual labials are formed by touching the blade of the tongue to the upper lip. So, now that we have seen epiglottals, pharyngeals, uvulars, velars, which are the back uh, sounds produced in the back region. Let us look at lingual labials. 
So, these are the three bilabial lingual labels in a venin thought. So, again um, that was lingual labials are rare in the languages of the world and talking about the rare sounds in the front part we have the coronals and among coronals there can be um, languages like Yanvoa and, and a few other languages which have at least seven stop place contrasts in the coronal region alone. So, so these are the Yan Vua um, stop contrast and all of them uh, till the palato alveolar, um, the apical retroflex, apical alveolar, dental, bilabial are uh, the coronal contrast and there are two back sounds, one is a front velar and one is a back velar. That is a bilabial, laminal, laminal dental, apical alveolar, apical retroflex, palato alveolar and a front velar versus a back velar. So, talking about a uh, contrast in the coronal region, we have languages like Nungubuyu, uh, so where the stop contrast can be seen in among the dental, alveolar, retroflex and palato alveolar. So, these are the gestures that you see here for the dental, for the alveolar, for the retroflex and the palato alveolar and uh, it is possible. So, even though there are not a lot of languages which contrast the dental with the alveolar, because um, those places or articulations are quite close in the vocal tract, but they are not seen. They are seen in quite a few languages and here we have one language which contrasts with dental and alveolar and retroflex and also a palato alveolar. So, uh, talking about contrast then, uh, in languages dental and alveolar most often if there is a dental contrast then an alveolar contrast is not there. So, this is summarizing the most common inventories. It is not to say that the dental and alveolar contrast does not exist as we have seen just seen it does exist. However, uh, most commonly if there is a dental uh, stop then the corresponding alveolar uh, stop or fricative is not there. So, if that is there if a dental and alveolar uh, or alveolar stop or fricative contrast is there then uh, very often among the stops a velar is also found and if there is a third contrast and it is common to find a palato alveolar, palatal or uvular if some languages have many very many back contrasts then if there is sometimes um, another place of articulation that could be retroflex and sometimes it could be labial velar. So, these are the common patterns seen in the languages of the world, but as we have seen there are so many variations that are possible to have in, in uh, among the places of articulation that you can have lingual labials, that they, you can have um, other places like pharyngeals, epiglottals, etc. and which are not the most commonly seen contrasts in the languages of the world, but we have covered uh, the the rare contrast as well as, to, as we are trying to give you an overview of not just a rare contrast, but also what is generally seen in the languages of the world. So, uh, before we go on to other aspects of sound production, so we will uh, let us see a few other things like laterality versus centrality. So, a lateral sound is when air passes out through the sides, central um, are the ones when air passes out centrally. Now, talking about the various aspects of sound production, we just saw uh, lateral versus central, there are other things as well. So, when we discussed articulatory phonetics, if you recall, then we said that the three most important things which um, 
help you distinguish consonants is place of articulation, manner of articulation and state of the glottis. But as we see now that there may be quite a few other properties among in consonants which also give consonants their particular shape and their particular distinctive properties. So, and that is not just because of a place of articulation, manner of articulation, there can be other things like airstream mechanism, the direction of airstream also. So, whether it is the airstream which is coming in or it is the airstream which is exhaled, so inhale or in exhale. So, and the mechanism which is used, is it the pharyngeal, the glottalized or the velarized um, airstream mechanism. And uh, glottal start which uh, state which we already know, but apart from the glottal state of voiced and voiceless, there could be other phonation differences. So, it could be both for vowels and consonants. Vowels and consonants can be both breathy, they can be creaky. Apart from the modal phonation, voicing and the most open state of the glottis that is voiceless and the most closed state of that of the glottal stop, there could be other properties that give consonants their distinctive features and consonants as well as vowels. And the other aspect is which we studied, which we looked at in the beginning of this lecture is that a part of tongue, is it apical, laminal, subapical, is it dorsal, all those properties also uh, give consonants their particular distinctive properties. So, a uh, place of articulation and remember there is not just primary place of articulation, there could be also secondary as we saw in the emphatic consonants in Syrian Arabic and they could be and in depending on the language you could have laryngealized, um, you, could, you could have uh, pharyngeal, you could have glottalized consonants which is and, and apart from the primary place of articulation they could also be secondary and of course manner of articulation is very important and the other aspect is centrality, central or lateral release and then there is the other aspect which we could see in both consonants and vowels is that of nasality that the velar, um, the velum lowers and releases air through the nasal cavity and that gives consonants and vowels another uh, distinctive property. So, these are from Ladifoget um, sounds of the words languages, we find voiceless nasals in Burmese Ma. also in Angami. So, these are voiceless nasals in uh, Burmese, uh, the examples and the sound files are all from uh, Ladifoget. So, one is bilabial, one is dental, one is palatal and one is villa, these are all the voice listeners. Nah. This is voice bilabial, nah. voice dental, nah. voice palatal, nah. and nah. villar. And then we have uh, another manner uh, which is trills, where two articulators open and close against each other rapidly and the example is from Kele which has both bilabial and alveolar trills. So, here are some Kele examples of bilabial and alveolar trills. The first examples are bilabial, the second ones that you will hear are alveolar. Pulim Brunkei Pulim Ruin Decay so, another aspect is that of centrality versus um, central versus lateral, which we uh, talked about when we are talking about the, the properties of consonants, centrality. So, there can be another property, not exactly a manner, but the property of laterals. So, this is uh, Kaitich is an Australian language. The Arundic group of the Pama Nyungan branch spoken in the Northern Territory. So, here these examples on top are the laminal dental. Hello. And then we have apical alveolar. 
better. And in apical post alveolar. And, the and laminal post alveolar. So, these are uh, lateral, these are examples that we see of laterals which could be laminal dental like the examples here, which could be apical alveolar uh, as in the examples here, which could be apical post alveolar and which could be laminal post alveolar and all of these differences exist in a uh, language called Khaitich. Now, we come to one of the main aspects that um, which gives consonants and vowels uh, their particular um, uh, the way that the, the a very uh, one of the very important things. So, uh, which will distinguish uh, consonants and vowels and also because not just because of the uh, distinctive property, but also because it um, this uh, the airstream mechanism is almost the most basic um, aspect in the production of consonants. So, um, because most of um, sounds that are produced in languages of the world are almost always pulmonic and that is how uh, humans speak with the pulmonic aggressive airstream. Now, importantly it is not always that sounds are produced with the pulmonic aggressive airstream and there are a few languages which use uh, the glottalic and velaric airstreams also producing very interesting particular and unique kind of sounds. So, uh, we have to remember that the pulmonic aggressive is the most commonly used um, the manner of the airstream mechanism and almost all sounds that we produce um, are the result of the pulmonic aggressive airstream mechanism. So, um, here is our pulmonic aggressive and then we have the glottalic and we have the velaric. So, pulmonic aggressive normally almost all sounds that we produce are pulmonic aggressive and then with the glottalic airstream the two ways possible aggressive and ingressive with the aggressive um, airstream mechanism we produce ejectives, in the ingressive we produce voice you know, implosives. So, uh, ejectives are mostly voiceless and implosives are mostly voiced and then in the velaric airstream only at the ingressive direction is possible and um, in this clicks are produced and clicks can be both voiceless and voiced. So, making speech sounds involves an airstream mechanism which we know from the beginning of this um, uh, course and we uh, moving by moving air uh, by exhaling from the lungs the, the pulmonic air aggressive airstream manages to produce most of the sounds, but then there is the aggressive glottalic aggressive and there is a which involves closures in the vocal tract and vocal folds. Compressed air is released with high pressure from oral closure and then ejectives are made without air flowing out of the lungs. So, this is the air in the closed glottis and uh, as we have seen in the examples the Quechua examples before we had seen a few ejectives and uh, the ejectives are symbolized. So, Quechua ejectives let us play the Quechua ejectives again. Chaka, kuyui, kuyui, galu, galu. So, those are the palatal alveolar, velar, uvular uh, and these are the ejective sounds. That is the uvular ejective, this is the velar ejective, this is the palatal velar ejective. Now, the airstream mechanism in the glottis can also produce sounds. So, how does how does that happen? So, the glottis is closed. Um, uh, stop closure is made. So, uh, first the glottis is closed and then there is a stop closure and uh, the glottis is raised as a result of which the, uh, the air is compressed in the supraglottal cavity and then this is released as 
is usual for all stops, there is complete closure and release. Here additionally there is a raising of the glottis and the air rushes out of the vocal tract from the high pressure region, there is a low pressure region created as a result of which the uh, glottal stop is, is produced and uh, sounds which are produced with the glottalic aggressive airstream mechanism, um, they are al always very, the, the loud sounds and um, uh, we heard uh, the uh, Quechua examples and um, apart from the glottalic aggressives, we can also make uh, from the glottalic region another kind of sounds are possible which are the implosives. So, implosives can also be made when air comes into the mouth. So, remember for the ejectives the glottis is raised, for the implosives the glottis is lowered. So, the dropping the closed glottis and an obstruction for the stop similar to uh, the ejective or stops, there is an obstruction and uh, sounds made in this way with the lowered glottis is uh, they are called implosives and these are examples from Sindhi. Bandi. 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 So, again the uh, glottalic ingressive airstream uh, produces implosives which the air forced into the mouth, uh, closure in mouth and at the vocal folds and a downward movement of the larynx and uh, the result is a lowered pressure and the expansion of the vocal cord and uh, strong vibrations because of this closure of the glottal uh, of the larynx and as a result we have ingressive. So, air which rushes into the mouth, the uh, glottis is lowered causing a uh, creating a lowered pressure and uh, the larynx is lowered sorry and it is causing lowered pressure and as a result there is some expansion of the vocal tract leading to strong vibrations. This is how ingressives, glottalic ingressive airstream which results in implosives are produced. This brings us to uh, the final airstream mechanism that we will discuss, the velaric ingressive sounds and these sounds are called clicks. So, with the velaric airstream only the ingressive direction is possible, so the aggressive is not possible which means the air coming into the uh, velaric region. So, clicks, they are either dental, alveopalatal, alveolar, lateral, these are from Hosa in southwestern Africa. So, um, this is a um, diagram showing the movement involved in making a click. So, the dark uh, area shows the cavity enclosed when the closures are formed, the light is, is uh, before the release, so it is a very small area and then the area is made bigger and then there is a release and the dashed line shows the um, lowered tongue position. So, the tongue goes up and down before the release. So, another important aspect of clicks is that there are two closures. So, here the back of the tongue raises to make a closure and there is a front, the tongue tip goes up to form a closure and as a result this is an alveolar click. So, while both closures are held, the body of the tongue moves down decreasing the pressure of the air in the front part of the mouth. So, the tongue tip lowers so that air rushes into the mouth. So, these are the four gestures involved, the tongue tip goes up, the back of the tongue raises to make a closure and both uh, closures are held and then the body of the tongue goes up and first the release happens from the tongue tip and that is how a loud sound is produced, a back closure is released. So, um, as we have just seen, clicks involve two closures, anterior and posterior closure and a pocket of air is created and when the front closure is released, air rushes into the mouth and a negative pressure and rapid air flow creates a loud sound. So, uh, two closures and a pocket of air created and when the front closure is released, 
the air rushes into the mouth. So, this is uh, the uh, reason a negative pressure is created and there is a rapid inflow. So, as uh, you can imagine if there is an alveolar click, the front closure of the tongue will be in the alveolar region. So, as usual there will be two oral closures and there will be air rarefaction which we just studied, the negative pressure which we just saw, the negative pressure because the tongue is pulled down and the, and the front closure is released after that and the air rushes in to equalize the pressure and that creates the and after the back closure is oral closure is released, uh, a very loud sound is produced. So, these are um, clicks in Isi Zulu and we can see that they have three regions, you know, three places of articulation that is dental, alveopalatal and alveolar lateral. Santa. So, this is the voiceless unaspirated velar this is the dental ka, ka. Ka, ka. so this is the dental this is the alveolar and this is the alveolar lateral so what we can see here in the spectrograms is that if in the alveopalatal which is clear we can see the two releases in the spectrogram and we can see that also in the dental region the two releases uh, because of the two closures and uh, two releases which are involved in clicks. And also another one here ka, ka. Ka, ka. Ka, ka. Toba. 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 Dental, alveopalatal and lateral. So, um, these are the movements in the production of clicks. So, we have bilabials here. So, we can see the pocket of air created, tongue lowered and uh, a release after that, dental and then we can see the pocket of air created, again tongue lowered. For the alveolar, again we see the tongue making a um, an occlusion here at the al alveolar region, pocket of air created and then uh, lowered um, which is responsible for the negative energy. So, which is um, lowered pressure as the air rushes in after the front uh, closure is released. This is the palatal, this is the lateral when the air is released from both sides. Other aspects of, of sound production that is glottis um, state, voiced, voiceless, murmured, laryngealized and closed, uh, part of tongue involved apical, laminal and dorsal or subapical. These are the primary places of articulation. Uh, here we are summarizing all that we have seen till now, bilabial, labiodental, dental, alveolar, retroflex, alveopalatal, palatoalveolar, palatal, villa, uvula, pharyngeal, and labia villa. Manner of articulation could be stop, fricative, approximant, trill, flap, tap and affricate. Centrality and you can have both central and lateral sounds. Nasality can have both oral and nasal sounds. And among stops, these are the different kinds of stops which are possible. We can have voice stops, voiceless, unaspirated, aspirated, murmured breathy sounds, implosives, laryngealized or creaky sounds which we will see in phonation part, the ejectives which we have already seen, the nasal release, so sounds which are released with the nasal and then pre-nasalized sounds and these are two types of stops that where we can have a nasal release and pre-nasalized and we can have a lateral release, we can have ejectives which are laterally released and then of course, there are many types of affricates. Again summarizing uh, many of the things that we have discussed since the last class. So, um, nasals um, stops fricatives can contrast along the bilabial dimension. Fricatives 
uh, and nasals have labiodental, the no stop stops are generally cannot be labiodentals and in the dental place of articulation all three are possible, alveolar all three are possible, retroflex also nasal stop, fricatives are possible, palatoalveolar place of articulation, fricatives are often seen and not stops and nasals. In the palatal region all three of them, in the velar region all three manner of articulation, in the uvular also all three manners of articulation are possible. In the pharyngeal region it is mostly fricatives and in labial velar place of articulation we find only nasals and stops. Again summarizing uh, the entire list of things that we have seen so far, airstream mechanism, we can have pulmonic, glottalic, velaric, direction can be aggressive, ingressive, glottis can be voiced, voiceless, murmured, laryngealized and closed, tongue could be apical, lapinal, neither, bilabial, so these are all the places of articulation we just saw, centrality and lateral and nasality can be either oral or nasal and these are the six um, manners of articulation possible. These are the symbols, uh, thank you for your attention, we will continue in the next class and we will continue with the sounds of the world's languages, we will see how vowels can be different and we will see a bit more on phonation and then we will wrap up this section on sounds of the world's languages. Thank you for your attention again.